So a couple days ago, I posted a video about Lego Batman's hidden secret characters that were within the customization feature. Yes, it's been literally over a decade since that game has released, and I was not aware of that feature. But fortunately enough, you guys actually did make me feel better about myself because many of you guys did not know about it either, which was really, really nice to see that there was a multitude of people that were just as surprised as I was. However, did you know that there are still more hidden characters to go on ahead and discuss? Now, if you've played Lego Batman, and to be quite honest, if you've played pretty much the vast majority of especially the older Lego games, you'll notice that there was a red power brick that was available for purchase throughout most of those games called Extra Toggle. Now, if you're like me, and you went ahead and unlocked it in order to get the 100% completion, but you had no freaking idea as to what it means, or if you were like me and thought that maybe the extra toggle means that you could transform into characters that were a little bit further away, that was literally what I thought it meant. However, did you know that that's not what it actually means? So typically speaking, the extra toggle feature works as follows. It basically allows you to go into levels and transform into characters that are within the level itself. So for example, in Lego Star Wars, the complete saga, you could go on ahead and transform into this character using the extra toggle feature. So that was kind of the method by which this worked. However, <laughs> oddly enough, in Lego Batman, that feature was implemented in terms of it was nope. available as a red power brick. However, when you activated it, it didn't actually work, which means that you didn't actually have access to these unique new characters. Now, for those of you that don't know, it actually is possible to have access to these characters utilizing a little bit of an adjustment in the code of the game. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is only possible on the PC wow. version of the game. So I don't think that this is possible on any other version, whether you're playing on console or the handheld variants of the Lego Batman video game. However, if you do make some adjustments within the code of the game, you do have access to 15. Yes, you heard me correctly. Wow. 15 characters that you typically would not be able to play as. So we're going to run through all of them here today. Let me know if you guys uh, like any of these designs in the game. We kick things off with Freeze Girl in the red attire. Now, of course, playing as the henchmen of the different villains that are within the game is nothing new. And so obviously this is not really all that much of a surprise that yet another variant of the henchmen is available to be played as in the Lego Batman video game. Next up, we have the biohazard scientist. And I got to say, this one's actually a really cool looking fig. To me, he almost looks like a villain from like the old school comics of Batman or maybe even like the Batman 1966 show where it's a bit of a goofier tone for the characters. It kind of has that sort of a motif and sort of vibe to it in general. I'm not really sure if those are supposed to be goggles or glasses and how that works exactly where his eyebrows are still clearly showing through the goggles are his eyebrows printed on the front of the goggles again this is probably something that will never be answered but one of the coolest features of the biohazard scientist is that he does actually have wow. a unique ability of being able to walk over the biohazard elements within the game so this is a really cool element because obviously it goes on ahead and shows you that these characters were actually coded to do things they had animations they had abilities and it's just that for whatever reason the extra toggle feature didn't actually properly activate so next up we have the business man and i gotta be honest i don't know what it is about this one but as soon as i saw this design it immediately made me think of harvey dent or aaron eckhart's harvey dent from the dark knight obviously before he becomes two-faced that is but maybe it's the blonde hair whatever it is it works really well as that particular character but once you jump into some gameplay with this one unfortunately he doesn't really do much he just runs around running away with his briefcase with probably contracts or maybe some cash or something running away from all the criminals of gotham but oddly enough, he does have an attack, but the only way to activate that attack is to jump into the air and then swing the briefcase. Yay! And to go on ahead with the businessman, you have the businesswoman who also does sport a pretty fancy looking attire for sure. I feel like something almost that we would see from like a 90s movie or something along those lines. But regardless, if you dive into gameplay with this one, similarly to the businessman, also sporting a briefcase, also doesn't have any sort of combat or abilities when it comes to regular movement, but 
once the character sprawls into the air, you can actually go on ahead and deliver a shot with that briefcase. For the next one, we have the factory worker, which I like to go on ahead and nickname this one Emmett because he kind of looks a little bit like Emmett from the Lego movie itself. But unlike Emmett, this one is ready to go on ahead and throw down because this minifig comes along with a wrench that he could go on ahead and utilize to battle anything and anyone within the game, just like you would as one of the regular characters. Now, this next one is legitimately fascinating because this one is called the Citizen. And the coolest thing about the Citizen is wow. that it seems like it will randomly select a random character citizen from Gotham City for you to play as. So it will never be the exact same one that you go on ahead and pick. In fact, even if you swap back and forth to the citizen within the level, it will actually go on ahead and select different citizen characters that you encounter throughout the game, which I think is actually kind of cool. And similarly to the previously mentioned civilian characters of the businessman and the businesswoman, this one also does not have any sort of attacks, which I guess makes sense in the context of the game, because usually the citizens are the ones that are in peril and you're rescuing them so i suppose it would make no sense if they just turn around and suddenly can attack the enemies that were going after them to begin with now this next one looks like the riddler if he had a little bit of time off to go on ahead and get interested in gardening this is probably the sort of look that he'd be rocking or i guess maybe those glasses kind of work for harry potter as well actually now that i see it but uh, this one is actually a pretty neat looking minifig. He does have a shovel that he can go on ahead and actually utilize as a weapon. So this is probably one of the more brutal characters in the game when you really contextualize the fact that he's running around in these levels and just hitting criminals over the head with shovels. But hey, maybe that's why they didn't go on ahead and make this one playable. The next one up is the janitor, or at least that's the name that they went with. But I swear this one looks like Sherlock Holmes with legit superpowers you might be thinking why is blitz saying that no it's not because he's got the broom and he's ready to sweep his way through these levels at a pace of a speedrunner. but it's more so because of this Jesus christ that's jason Bourne. yes i don't understand how this works but somehow some way the janitor can go on ahead and just force repel shots away from him so i don't know who this janitor exactly is but if anybody knows who this character is, leave it in the comment section below. The next one up is the security man. And I gotta be honest, it looks like his hat is just missing a Supreme logo to make it that much more hype beast. But the fig itself looks pretty cool, of course. He does have some cool gameplay elements with the actual pistol weapon that he has. So I think that that's obviously kind of neat. It almost gives me a vibe of like playing GTA or something like that. Definitely not a Lego game. Next up, we have the sewage worker and the sewage worker, similarly to the previous gardener that we looked at, it does have a shovel weapon as well. So you can go on ahead and utilize that shovel to defeat his opponents. Get ready to rock and get ready to roll because the next character is the rock chick. And there's really not much that this character can do. Unfortunately, this one is very similar to the vast majority of the regular sort of civilian characters that we've looked at before where they can just run and that's pretty much all the animations that they got it would have been incredible if she had like a guitar or maybe a microphone as a weapon i think that would have made this character quite unique now oddly enough the next character is the zookeeper and the reason why i'm saying oddly enough is because at first i thought maybe it was a bit of a trend where some of the civilian or regular looking characters that are not holding an item maybe can't attack but for some weird reason, this one can go on ahead and actually use his fists. So I'm not really sure why some of the other civilians didn't have that option, but this one does. This next one is one of the coolest or maybe the single coolest looking character of the entire bunch, and that is the Riot Police. He's just got like a full artillery armor. He's got the riot shield. He's got the baton. He's ready to go. He definitely looks like someone that is a resident of Gotham City. For the next one, we have the Sailor character, but I suppose this is also obviously one of Penguin's henchmen. Yes, this character does indeed have chest hair. Don't know why that had to be a detail that was there, but nevertheless, this character similarly to the zookeeper can go on ahead and punch characters. Bruh. Now for the last character, this is most definitely gonna be the most bizarre one of the bunch. So prepare yourself because this one is simply called the geek. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is such a bizarre character, well, you know what? I think it's best if I just go on ahead and show you some gameplay. 
So as you can see, the reason why this character is so bizarre, because he doesn't even move. So the other characters that couldn't punch or go on ahead and do the typical things that characters need to be able to do in this game, they were at least able to move with proper animations. This one doesn't even have any sort of aim and does not have any sort of animation. So you're just moving around as this static minifig. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button with a batarang. Thank you so very much for your support. I will hopefully get you all here on the next one. Peace out. See you later, alligators.